Welcome to Alien Agenda. This is Tony Tiora uh, discussing our next topic um, related to documents that came into Alien Leaks. Alien Leaks received a whole batch of documents related to anti-gravity and zero-point energy. Now, to a lot of folks who read science fiction, and, and as you probably know, as your host Tony Tiora, I'm a, as a science fiction, I love science fiction, but I also love science fact. And uh, the anti-gravity documents um, I think, you know, when you, when you look at the history of anti-gravity, right, people don't know this, but NASA actually had studied, has been studying anti-gravity. You can find papers where they found that you could take rotating this and they, they discovered that these things wrote, these, these special discs that were rotating, that above them when smoke came by, that the smoke acted differently. And it was because the gravitation had actually changed above these rotating discs, which is quite, you know, interesting because if you look at a lot of the UFOs that come out, you know, you'll see these UFOs that are spinning and whatnot. Um, Bob Lazar, who worked at, you know, Area 51 at Groom Lake there, people try to discredit him, but you, you can look at the information. He seems very... Um, like legitimate. I actually believe that Bob Lazar did work where he said he worked. He talked about using an element, a new element called 115, element 115 that is used um, in these devices to create um, th this field that then either neutralizes um, gravity so that these devices can can move, you know, kind of effortlessly through through our space. Um, you know, he, he studied those propulsion systems. So if you if you're interested in that, you, you can go online and look at some of the Bob Lazar stuff. But the stuff that came into Alien Leaks to, to um, Ron Watkins at Alien Leaks um, showed how there's a big interest in these various military companies. You know, big companies like you know Boeing, Lockheed Martin, and all them to uh, to study this kind of stuff. So if you look at those documents, they're going to be very detailed. You're going to read about also um, some zero point energy. So we're going to go from um, anti-gravity to zero point energy. Anti-gravity, if you think about gravity, nobody, nobody really understands gravity. I mean, people say, you know, you, you know, they show Newton dropping an apple and an apple falls down. They know how to create a formula for gravity, but nobody really understands it. And that's why when Einstein was trying to create his unified field theory, gravity caused all kinds of problems. He could never take the major forces and combined them together in a unified field theory. I know people nowadays are looking at multi-dimensions, they're looking at um, you know, um, string theory and things like that at the Institute of Advanced Studies at Princeton and places like that, but nobody has really, really understood gravity. I mean, maybe there's some scientists working on these alien projects underneath some base somewhere who, are, who have a little bit more information on gravity, but I, I, I tend to doubt that anybody even today, even with the alien, crafted, I suspect that they recovered, completely understand gravity. Now, so, but if you can remove the force of gravity, now if you think about this, right, people take magnets sometimes, and you can, you know, you can't really see what's going on. I don't think people really understand magnetism either. They can, they can define the forces and whatnot, but if you take two magnets, a north and south pole, or, or, or two of the same poles, and you push them together, you'll, you'll get the repulsion. You know, in Japan, where I live, that's how the, uh, the bullet trains work. You know, they're basically on a magnetic cushion, but what's in between there? You know, people really, you know, there's nothing there. It's just two things pushing and they push apart. Well, gravity is, is similar in the sense that what's there, it just pulls it down. You know, something just pulls down because of mass. But if you're able to get rid of gravity, you know, now you've got a device that is like, you know, free from, for free from being pulled down, but that doesn't give you, you know, propulsion. You're going to need, you're going to need other energy or, or the ability to warp time and space to decrease the space. I mean, if you're able, if you've got like two meters that you want to go, but you can actually warp space into one meter, guess what? You've actually traveled one meter. So, so, you know, some of these devices, in my, my opinion, are able to warp, you know, space and time. Um, but you still need energy to do that. Everything requires energy. You can't get rid of all the laws of thermodynamics, okay? But now maybe, maybe people are going to say, well, if you talk about zero-point energy, maybe you are throwing away the laws of thermodynamics. Tesla was allegedly, um, had allegedly built a device where he was able to get zero-point energy. He had a car that he could drive around with an antenna. And he used to work, I think it was, I don't know if it was J.P. Morgan, it was one of the Morgans, and, um, you know, they said, well, you know, if I can't put a meter on it, I don't want it because, you know, what is this? I mean, if everybody could just put energy on, you know, for free, then they can't charge. I think that that argument is still th true today. You know, the reason why I think zero point energy is, is being hidden is because the powers that be, you know, don't want to lose, lose the being the powers that be. You know, if everybody had this free energy, 
Also, um, if you know you had this free energy, does that mean that the world's going to be a better place? I'm not. I'm not so sure. I mean, you know, everybody would have electricity, but then you'd have more people living. You'd still have energy heat created from you know all the things that people are running. If everybody had an electric car and you had you know 50 billion people living on planet Earth, you'd still you'd still ruin the environment. So, but um, zero point energy is interesting. You know, Dr. Stephen Greer, um, who has you know really pushed out. Um, this disclosure project, he's got a bunch of films out. He talks about, you know, zero point energy being hidden. People, a lot of people don't know this, but um, even people like Edgar Mitchell, you know, you can see a Podesta email where, they to where he talks about being like an ambassador, you know, to trying to push out, um, you know, zero point energy and he talks about aliens. So, you know, I mean, people can say, well, you know, Edgar Mitchell who, you know, landed on the moon and walked on the moon um, is crazy, um, but um, I, I don't think so. And um, there are other people who talk about zero point energy, um, very, very, very scientists, there's papers out there. What they're able to do, and I'm not, you know, a physicist, but um, they're able to find ways to suck energy kind of like out of a vacuum. So it seems like you're getting something from nothing. But um, that's not necessarily true, because if you think of multi-dimensions, maybe you're getting something out of a different dimension and the other dimension's losing stuff. As a science fiction writer, I find it fascinating because there was a book, I think it was, uh, I'm not sure the author, it might have been Isaac Asimov, one of, the, one of the stories where people were getting this free energy, it was kind of like, you know, zero point energy. But what they were doing is they were destroying another galaxy. You know, they're sucking it out of another galaxy. So, I mean, I think it's possible. Uh, the studies, the scientific studies are there. I think it's being hidden. Um, there's another gentleman, uh, Mr. Gamble. I think he's related to the Procter & Gamble company. He has a website called Thrive, and he talks about it also. So, you know, there's a community out there to believe that this is being, this is being hidden. Um, I think that, you know... I think that if there is zero point energy, well, what, what, a, what a tragedy, right? You know, we're running around destroying the planet with fossil fuels. Just because, you know, you have, if you, even if you have, quote, this free energy, why, why, can't, why can't the countries, you know, use it, you know, and make like a national, you know, energy program where, where electricity is free, you know, um, for people, for their homes? You know, we don't, we don't want to be wasteful. We don't want to burn up the planet. But actually, I think we'll save the planet. If you look at all the carbon, you know, when people are using coal and uh, fossil fuels, you know, all the carbon, the, this anthropogenic warming that's going on is because, is because of it. Now, people are going to say, well, you know, that's all a bunch of BS, there's these cycles. You know, and I don't like getting into the politics of it. You know, I'm, I'm kind of neutral in politics. I, I, bel in, I believe in the science. People can say, well, you know, science is not sure. Yeah, there's cycles and various things, but I think the science is actually very clear. If you pump an atmosphere with tons of carbon, you know, carbon dioxide, um, it's going to heat up the planet. And I think that we, and even, even if I'm wrong, right, why would you want to charge people to dig coal and create coal factories to make electricity when you can get a little box and get, quote, free electricity, you know, from zero point energy? Wouldn't, wouldn't we have a better planet if we did that? So I think the governments hiding the research on like anti-gravity and, and uh, zero point, in, it's, a, it's a tragedy. And anybody, you know, who's working on these projects who might say, well, I just want to listen to this video, Alienogenic, because it's kind of interesting. You know, everybody thinks that they're doing like a service to national security, that we have to, we have to protect this stuff. Well, protect it from what? Like, wh what's going to happen if the world has like anti-gravity. Maybe they don't need cars. Maybe the trains will change. The world will be a better place. If we have zero point energy, then, then people can have cars that they don't have to go buy gasoline. I mean, the power structure can do other things. You know, maybe, you know, is that what we want? Do we really want a planet? Do the people in power really want a planet where everybody's living in poverty? They can't use these technologies. And by the way, the government is not the most effective place to be doing this stuff. This is why I think like uh, General, I think it was Corso, I'm not sure if, I think it was Colonel or General, I'm not sure. He um, put out a book where he said that the government asked him to put out some of the technical information from the crash saucer, you know, Roswell, into these companies. That's where they got the transistor, Kevlar, and a whole bunch of things, you know, like night vision, you know, cameras and all this stuff are allegedly from alien technology. And the 
I think the biggest problem is most governments just want this alien technology to themselves. They want to hoard it um, so that they can, you know, beat up another country. But, you know, for what? For what? Well, um, that's, that's the discussion on um, the topic of uh, anti-gravity and zero-point energy. Please, when you get a chance, take a look at alienleaks.org. You can read more details about the document, and we'll be posting some information also on our Alien Agenda um, site also. Thank you for um, watching this. Please um, click at the bottom, you know, like and, and subscribe, and also um, click the little bell at the bottom. We really appreciate your support. Without your support, we couldn't continue putting out this, um, this great information. Thank you.